Hey everybody, new week, new radio show, new video to go with it. I'm Ken Luther. I'm the host of a show called Mostly Metal on WVLP in little tiny Valparaiso, Indiana, 103.1 FM, but for most people in the rest of the universe streaming on WVLP.org. Mostly Metal is a two-hour heavy metal show, mostly, that airs Wednesday nights at 10 and Sunday nights at 8 U.S. Central. Right now, the original broadcast on Wednesday, and then it's replayed on Sunday. And the last many weeks, to keep myself entertained, I've been working into the show, top 10 favorite songs by various bands, and then making these videos sort of as a, as a supplement, just so I can keep yapping about this stuff. It's been fun because it gives me an excuse to concentrate on a any particular band, whereas just left my own devices, I might just randomly listen to a few songs at a time. It's really fun to dive back into old catalogs and revisit some things. This week uh, is Pain of Salvation, so this Wednesday night, June uh, 17th, and then the following Sunday, the 21st, you can tune in and listen to new songs by uh, BMPD, BPMD, the Mike Portnoy and uh, Bobby Blitz super group. They have a American Made. It's a CD with a bunch of cover tunes of old rock and roll classics. Uh, got some uh, Beyond the Black and Vio and Wilder Run and uh, Live Ahab, just to mix things up a little bit. But then after that, you can hear my top 10 favorite Pain of Salvation songs. And I'll tell you what that list is in a bit. First, I'm going to give my preference ranking of their discography or what I might call grabbing order when it's time to listen to Pain of Salvation. What am I most likely to least likely uh, to listen to? So they have nine full-length studio albums altogether, starting in 1997 with Entropia, and then most recently from 2017, In the Passing Light of Day, and an album called Panther, uh, is, is floating around as being released in 2020, so we'll see what that is all about. I have no idea. So I'm going to give you my preference ranking from the bottom up, and I'm just going to give you numbers 9 and 8 at the same time, because it's like one album spread over two CDs, and in fact it's called 1 and 2, and now you know what they are. Uh, Road Salt 1 and Road Salt 2. I'm gonna, I like Road Salt 2 a little bit better, so I'm going to put that at number 8. Road Salt 1 at number 9. These came out in 2010 and 2011. When you got used to Pain of Salvation up to that point, these two albums were kind of a detour from the normal sound. Uh, the songs got a lot shorter, and it went from you know very cerebral, progressive metal to more kind of a what I would say a sort of a dirty rock uh, kind of vibe to it. You know, it, if you like it, you like it. I don't dislike it, but I don't like it as much as the rest. Um, Road Salt 1 has Linoleum and Curiosity, and the title track is Good Tunes. Road Salt 2 has some songs that I specifically remember as just being absolutely tremendous live songs um, to the shoreline specifically. I was watching them at Reggie's in Chicago. This has been a, quite a few years now. And Daniel Gildan Lowe, the main force, the singer, the songwriter, guitarist, um, he was struggling with a serious bout of the flu at the time. Looked like he was going to pass over at any moment, but he struggled through the show. Uh, it was amazing to watch. Uh, the performance of To the Shoreline was just magical during that show. That's, that's one of my favorite songs by them now, as I've just sort of given something away for the next part of this video. Um, at the end of the show, the either the sound crew decided that it was curfew time or maybe there was a miscommunication but the PA system in the house went out but Daniel still wanted to play a little bit so they played a song from Road Salt 1 um, I can't remember the title now but it's the lead track on Road Salt 1 uh, he played it with no house sound all we could hear was the monitors on the stage but it was a small enough club that with him singing at us and the drums banging away and his guitar we could tell what was going on and that was another great moment and then like two days later he had to cancel the rest of the tour because he had developed pneumonia um, so that was that was one of my more memorable experiences so uh, all that being said even though Road Salt 1 and 2 are at the bottom of my list and I'm you know I don't crap on them just because oh it's not progressive metal you know it is what it is they had something in their system to get out and some people like it and I don't 
dislike it, but I don't like it as much as the rest. At number seven, I'm going to put their most recent album, In the Passing Light of Day from 2017. Um, this is sort of a mishmash of the dirty rock of Road Salt 1 and 2, but steered back towards the progressive metal. Now we're back to, you know, a couple of nice long, long songs. Uh, on a Tuesday, the opening track is over 10 minutes long. The title track is, is quite long. My favorite song on this album is Meaningless. That's a really emotional tune. Um, I, I don't know that I find all the songs pleasant to listen to. Uh, so I like that it's steering back in the progressive metal direction. Um, the tunes, even the tunes that are more drawn out, I, I like the lengthier part of them, but I don't know that they're captivating all the way through through those those longer times. So all in all, it's to me, it's sort of a mixed listening experience. At number six, I will put B from 2004. Uh, this is the epitome of cerebral pain of salvation, right? All the a very heavy concept of human existence behind this album. Um, there's symphonies and you know choir-like vocals and uh, every song title is in latin so uh, imago and pluvius istemus vocari vocari dei uh, is is something that everybody should listen to at least once whether you're a metal fan or not because it's just it's they opened up a answering machine on a phone number that i guess they gave out and they told people to call and leave messages with what they would want to say to God if they could say it. And some of them are just heart-wrenching, and some of them are very deep. Uh, it's, it's an impressive listen, and it's got this nice musical bedding in the background. So regardless of anything else on the album, everybody needs to listen to that at least once. Um, Diffidentia and the closing track, Martius and Nautica Part Two. that's all really good stuff, but to me it's sort of an, it's an inconsistent listen. Uh, but I like the idea of it. At number five, I will put Scar Sick from 2007. Now, um, last week I mentioned that I had a couple of big surprises in terms of how much I liked some of the Jethro Tull CDs that I hadn't listened to for a long time. And Scar Sick to me has always been, you know, I, I could never place it because about half of the songs on it I just absolutely love, and the other half of the songs I really don't like at all. Uh, so it's just it's to me I, I can't listen from beginning to end and really enjoy everything but when i tune into the songs that i love like scarsick and spitfall and america and enter rain um, i don't know that i like uh, disco queen but it's okay i guess it's fun in concert right you got that to say for it um, so the the good songs really buoy this album up for me um, number four, One Hour by the Concrete Lake from 1998. Um, the environmental themes on this album are terrific. I have my degree in environmental science, so it speaks to me in some places. Um, Inside, The Big Machine, Handful of Nothing, and Water, and Home are great tunes. Um, a lot of Pain of Salvation's albums are, are peppered with really sweet, mellow tracks. Uh, and Pilgrim off of One Hour by the Concrete Lake is one of those. Number three, The Perfect Element, part one in 2000. Um, great songs from beginning to end, used in the flesh, ashes, idioglossia, her voices, um, the title track that closes out the album. Just great stuff. Um, sort of one of the quintessential uh, Pain of Salvation albums, I think. Number two, I'm going to put Entropia, their debut from 1997. Um, this one's not quite as smooth as The Perfect Element. But it's got, uh, it's got punch to it, it's got energy, it's got groovy parts, it's got nice slow parts, it's got heavy parts. I mean, this album is just all over the place, and I really appreciate it. I like the opening track, exclamation mark, or forward, as it's called in parentheses. People passing by, the bass line that opens that tune is great. Oblivion, Ocean, and Stress, and To the End, it's all really good stuff. And then at number one, by process of elimination, I will put Remedy Lane from 2002. Every single song on this album is just magical. It's not one of, it's not just my number one Pain of Salvation CD, but it's probably in my top three CDs of all time. I love it that much. Um, and when we get to my top 10 list, uh, you'll see that top 10 list is, uh, I struggled to keep everything from this album out of that top 10 list because I didn't want it just to be 
here's my top 10 favorite Pain of Salvation songs. Let's listen to Remedy Lane. <laughs> um, but there we go. Uh, also of note for them, uh, Falling Home is, uh, I don't know if you call it an EP or a short studio album, but it's acoustic revisions of some of their other songs and one or two new tracks but it's all soft it's all acoustic and along the same line an album called 12 to 5 12 5 is live instrumental acoustic versions of many songs that have other familiar titles that are retitled on the album and it's a it's a great listen all the way through so even though they're not kind of traditional studio albums they're definitely worth listening to all right let me grab my top 10 list and start through that. Okay, top 10 favorite Pain of Salvation songs. I normally don't cheat on these lists, but hey, what are you gonna do? It's it's my list. Uh, so when I play these songs this week on my radio show, Mostly Metal, I'm not just playing 10 songs because I have one through 10, and then also 10A and 10B. And here's why. Because like I mentioned in my preference ranking of the CDs, the Pain of Salvation albums are peppered with just absolutely sweet, uh, short, melodic tunes here and there. And it's hard to compare like a three minute mellow acoustic track to something like People Passing By off of Entropia that's 10 minutes long and heavy and it's got an awesome bass groove and things like that. So it was really difficult to see if I could filter these songs in. So what I've done is I've, I've counted number 10 Second Love from Remedy Lane in 2002 as my official uh, entrant on my top 10 list of these types of songs. But at 10A and 10B comes the song Falling Home off of the CD of the same name and To the Shoreline from Road Salt 2. Both of those are just absolutely tremendous mellow tunes. So the three of them kind of form to me a, a, just a glorious package of, of mellow melodicness that just makes me so happy to listen to. But I did pick Second Love as the representative of those three to be the official number 10. Um, again, off of Remedy Lane, which, as I mentioned, my favorite Pain of Salvation album by far, one of my top three to five favorite CDs of anybody by far. So I don't know that the rest of this list is is a truly top 10 list because if it was truly my top 10 favorite Pain of Salvation songs, I would have to have like five or six tunes off of Remedy Lane on this list. So I do want to give some representation uh, to the rest. So it's sort of like, you know, uh, great inflation here where once I got three songs off of Remedy Lane in my top 10, I said, all right, enough of you. I'm going to give some of these other CDs a chance. But at number 10, off of Remedy Lane, Second Love. At number 9, off of B from 2004 is Imago. This has the uh, the melodic theme that reappears a couple of other times in the album as it goes through. It's one of the, uh, the, the faster paced songs on this album. The one, the song that's a little bit closer to just kind of core, progressive, pain of salvation, um, where is the, you know, the cerebral bits in the rest of the album sort of uh, flow in and out of the music and don't make it as, as straight ahead of a listening experience as the as say imago is um, so it's my favorite song off of that album at number eight i'll put home by one hour by the concrete lake uh, this is a, a great tune off of that second cd at number seven idioglossia off of the perfect element part one this is the i believe the second longest song on the album apart from the title track itself um, it's it remind it's got some segments in it that actually remind me a lot of dream theater just in the way it's structured and the way it comes out uh, sounding um, but just some tremendous instrumentation and and laying of you know instrument over instrument over instrument really really good stuff Crib Caged off of Scarsick uh, at number six for me. Uh, I am playing this song on the radio this week. It is littered with f bombs, as it should be given the the lyrical content. I just I love the energy and the attitude in this song. Um, I had to do something to make it playable on the radio. So uh, in rare instances where I have to cover something in a song that shouldn't be on the radio, I use Censorship Duck. If you would like to know what Censorship Duck does, uh, feel free to tune in to WVLP Wednesday night at 10 or Sunday night at 8. 
uh, at the back end of the show. So Crib Cage is probably going to come on at about uh, 9.20 on, sorry, about, about 11.20 on Wednesday night and about 9.20 on Sunday night. But you should listen to the whole two hours anyway, right? I mean, I do the show, but somebody's got to listen, otherwise it's not worth it. Um, to the end, off of Entropia from 97 at number 5, uh, this is more towards the back end of that album. And I like the, the, the way the music sweeps through this song. It's got a nice flow to it. Uh, good beat. Number four, In the Flesh, off of The Perfect Element Part 1. So that's the second of two songs on this list. This is a great, uh, great song with vocal overlays. It's great live, great to sing along to. It's got good energy and crunch. Uh, number three, Rope Ends, off of Remedy Lane. See, there we go again. Remedy Lane. Uh, rope ends next to chain sling also next to undertow i mean i if this was a true top 10 list i probably would have included all three of those songs in it but i chose rope ends as the representative tune because to me it's got the most dynamics it's got the mellowness it's got the heaviness it's got a little bit of everything Number two, People Passing By off of Entropia. I just love the bass line. It opens the song and it carries it along for 10 minutes. It's just a, it's a groovy tune. And number one, okay, back to Remedy Lane, A Trace of Blood, my favorite Pain of Salvation song, one of my favorite songs of all time. I mean, the, the lyrical content is just devastating and it's a very emotional song, especially when you understand what the lyrics are telling you. And it's just not, it's, it's, a listening experience that makes you think um, as well as just makes you appreciate the melodies and the instrumentation. Some honorable mentions in that list that didn't quite make it. You know, I mentioned Undertow and Chain Sling off of Remedy Lane, Water off of One Hour by the Concrete Lake. Usually when I play something from that album, it's either Home or Water. Um, meaningless off of in the passing light of day was uh, it almost became 10 C uh, it's a it's a little bit mellow and it doesn't quite fit with falling home into the shoreline because those are each two uh, three minutes long plus a few seconds um, meaningless is more like six minutes so it doesn't quite fit that mold so I wasn't ready to boot off anything else in this top 10 list but I wanted to mention it because it's my favorite song off of that most recent album and hopefully like I said before this album Panther that I saw mentioned online with a tentative release date in 2020 hopefully that's gonna actually come out and have some good stuff so thanks for listening I hope you enjoy pain of salvation and next week it's gonna be top 10 favorite songs and preference ranking for the doobie brothers and then after that I am probably going to do candle mass just to you know change things up a little bit have a good week